Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna look at one of my favorite CRTs in my entire collection. And surprise, it's not a pro or broadcast level monitor. It's actually a consumer CRT. And that is this lovely 13 inch Zenith of all brands, uh, consumer television. Now it's easy to see why this is one of my favorite televisions. Not only is it a translucent CRT, uh, but it also has a really cool color scheme. It's just a simple Orion CRT tube inside, and it doesn't support a lot of different video inputs or anything. It's pretty simple. Now, you will see some of other models of the Zenith television. There's a full black normal version, which is not very exciting. Uh, but this version is kind of a hybrid between that all black standard boring version and then another version which was marketed to a specialty uh, market and that is the all clear prison or jail televisions and those were made completely see-through and clear so that obviously no one could hide any contraband or uh, illegal materials weapons inside and then the other thing is is you couldn't easily get inside those TVs they also tended to not even include a single speaker on them they only would have channels and volume and a input on the front like we have on this one for headphones because if you were in a jail setting you wouldn't be able to just leave your TV on and blare the sound out of it on whatever channel you wanted from your room you need to have something to prevent everybody from going crazy and getting into fights all the time over what they were having to listen to from one of their neighbors. But that was one of the features. So on that version, you're only going to get a headphone jack. You're only going to probably get volume and channels, and you won't even have access to your video input on the front. Now, this design, again, used tons of the parts and design from that. Uh, jail model. It only has one speaker in it, a nice mono audio speaker. Uh, it does have composite video on the front. What we're running on right now is obviously the Nintendo GameCube. Now this TV did come out around the year 2000, which would me make sense for it to have the GameCube running on there. Looks fantastic in composite. This is uh, a 480i scene, I believe, on there. Uh, but I will show you some other stuff that we can hook up into it. But that's kind of a good overview. Now let's look at some of the things a little bit closer. So you can access the menu on this by just pressing those two buttons together. That is not something that you should have been able to do on the uh, jail version. So you could do this and then sit, get in here and make some adjustments. Uh, but normally you're just going to use this for volume and channel up and down and then power. And then here's our earphone, as it said, um, our earphone jack, our video and audio input. And then we've got our Zenith emblem up here on the top of the screen. And what you would have maybe seen is, uh, again, like I said, there were some Heineken versions, which to me almost looked like Heineken just put a sticker on the front of this. Maybe they bought like a pallet of these and just decided to throw either a sticker or maybe have uh, them all engraved with Heineken. And that way they could make it kind of a collector's item because it does match a Heineken perfectly. And it also matches, you know, jungle. Uh, jungle green N64 and and even like a see-through Xbox or something there's just a look at the shape of the shell nice rounded shell and then we've got lots of air holes for breathing on the sides and then on the back bottom portion and then here's a closer look at this particular label again this is made by Zenith 13 inch color TV the particular model number for this one is C13A05LG. And then, again, we're looking at an Orion tube inside. And uh, this one was made in August of 2000. Now, if we look down at the bottom, I'll show you just the only thing we've got there is an antenna or RF input, which I will show you in a second. We're going to hook up an RF console in here just so you could see how that looks. Uh, but the, the cool thing is, as you can see inside of this monitor, uh, when you're just looking at it, now this one has never been opened. I've never opened it since I've owned it. I just kind of bought it, and it's always worked perfectly. And so I've just left it as is for right now. But uh, let's go ahead and, I mean, uh, why not? Let's try to open it up and see what it looks like inside. So before we jump in looking at the inside of this, let's go ahead and test out this RF in the back. And um, we're going to get set up with a special console to do that. So I'm going to be using a Sega Genesis Model 2 RF switch. 
and it will be set to channel three. The console I'm going to hook up is actually going to be unique. It's not going to be a Genesis, but it will use that Genesis part and also use a Genesis power supply input. Uh, but we're going to try and use this little contraption, which maybe you know what it is, but it's for the turbo graphics. And what it does is it, it gives you RGB out, but the funny thing is you can also use it just to get something like RF out for the NEC turbo graphics. All right, folks, there we have it. This is RF. You will notice a little bit of snow if you look at it, but it has a pretty darn good clear picture for RF. There's a, you know, a little bit of convergence separation, but it's not, it's not the worst RF signal definitely usable however the composite is an upgrade but it definitely works and uh, it gives you an option on this television to have something to always test rf signals and give you a pretty good picture if the rf signal is is quality but still you know preferably you want to use composite all right let's open up this television and just see what's going on inside now the first thing you should know is that this cannot be opened with just a standard Phillips head or flathead screwdriver. You have to get a security kit, which I got this off Amazon or eBay or something. And uh, you need a six-pointed uh, specialty security bolt. I'm sure there's a name for this six-point pattern, but you need that to get inside here. And the funny thing is, is that's part of the design that this TV took from the prison version. And... That way, that would not be easy to get into if you were <laughs> using this in jail. But again, this version would have not been approved for use in jail because it's green. It had to be fully clear plastic. There also was a blue version of this television uh, that was clear uh, besides just this green one. Uh, when you try to get a security bolt kit, don't even bother going somewhere like the hardware store. Uh, they're kind of wasting your time. They, they usually don't carry stuff like this, at least the ones near me. Funny story, when I went and tried to get this security kit, I, I thought maybe I could just go down to the hardware store and get one there. And it's a pretty big store that everybody knows. It's, it's a, you know, major store. I... I'm not afraid to name them. It was Lowe's in my gal my hometown. So I went in there and I went into the uh, screwdriver section and I asked the gentleman working in there if he had ever, if they sold any security bolt kits like the one I'm using here today or needed. And uh, I was really surprised because he, he started looking at me really funny and got this, again, smug kind of, like, look on his face, and he, he asked me, he said, what, what, are you, what are you doing? Uh, why do you need to get inside a security bolt? And I said, man, I'm working on, you know, old machines. And he looked at me, and he said, no, we don't sell that stuff. And frankly, those bolts are put there for a reason to keep people like you out of them. And I said, are you serious? And he's just, like, looked at me like I was some kind of criminal just for trying to get inside, I was like, I'm trying to get inside an obsolete electronic from the, uh, you know, 20 years old. And it didn't matter. He just looked at me funny, so I left. And um, again, don't don't even bother trying to find one there because they'll get tr guilt trip you too. I mean, I know that like some people, I, I never thought that somebody would be on the side of like the companies for the whole right to repair issue. But hey, I uh, guess everybody is a critic. All right, here's the inside of this CRT. It's definitely dirty. Nothing special to this shell, just one piece of plastic. So we get that out of the way. And if we look in here, uh, we got, again, our Orion picture tube. Just a simple degaussing strap around it. And a very simple design. We got a, a pretty standard yoke here. It's a pretty solid tube that Orion made back in the day for at least this size. We have our speaker down here, our mono speaker. And then here's our neck board. There is. I mean, that does have a nice convergence ring set up, so that's pretty impressive. And 
no adjustments available or really much components at all. Uh, just a couple of things for the color drives right there. The rest of the stuff is pretty darn simple. So we could go in here. We'll probably recap this pretty soon. Definitely clean it off because there's only about less than 20 caps in here. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. There's some smaller ones up front towards the chroma chip. So the one thing that I may be interested in, I'm not really interested in, in modding this television as much as uh, unless there's something built into it that you can just simply unlock. Uh, I definitely don't want to do anything that would cut the plastic or uh, do any kind of mod that would damage anything or just be destructive in any way. So what I want to do is um, keep it to where it's mostly original. Now you notice how the circuit board has a you notice how the circuit board has a cutout down here. Well, guess what? It's the exact same size as the neck board. That's a way these companies would save money. They'd print one giant circuit board and then they'd cut that section out after they built it. And it would be, again, used as a neck board. So you'd save a little bit of your manufacturing costs rather than making two separate boards. You make one large board and pop it out. But that's pretty much it for this one. Not a whole lot going on. Um, inside but still a solid little television here's one last look at the CRT running in RF again so I, I just kind of blown away by how good that picture is for RF uh, I again do not anticipate a mod for this maybe S video depending on the video chip on the uh, main board but to be honest with you there's not a whole lot of extra you can probably get out of a television like this the the more important thing is is conserving its uh, appearance and it's you know, it's kind of keeping it in its original form i believe this is one more for just a, a talking piece or to show off so i will definitely clean it up and do a cap kit on it and then we may discuss if there's some kind of S video mod available. Maybe we could do a no cut mod where we have a connector coming out of the back that's not going through anything to make any new holes. So we'll see about that. Uh, but again, there are plenty of great consumer televisions out there that are CRTs that have so much character. Uh, don't just pass on them because this one is a great example of that and will surprisingly be valuable as the years go on and people are looking for more of the obscure and weird CRTs plus this one's small enough to be able to hold in just about any collection uh, once you get over that 13 inch format it really starts to take up a lot more space hey guys thanks again for watching today and I will definitely see you guys next time with some more retro content